Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. So, I'm going to probably be away by the time this video actually goes up. I'm at a film festival in Scotland, so I'm not going to be around properly until Sunday. So, if I do get the chance to maybe do a live stream or re record some videos, I'll be sure to do that. But for now, I'm pretty sure I won't be able to do that. So, I'm just going to pre-record maybe like one or two videos so I can fill up the time for when we actually go until it's Sunday because right now the Flash TV show's off, Supergirl's off for one more week, uh, I believe Arrow's going to be off so there's not too much to go over so I'm going over some stuff that is very interesting in this video and also I should be doing a Q&A video I've asked for some questions and maybe this goes up before or after, I don't know. But anyway, so this video is going to be talking about rejected concepts and storylines from the Flash TV show, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this is coming from Reddit, so again, take it with a grain of salt, but I believe there were some deleted concepts that were posted on Arrow's Reddit a few days ago, I saw Paige's video. I'm not up to date on Arrow, so I can't really do that right now, but anyway, so let's talk about this. So I'm going to be going through it bit by bit, he talks about season 1, 2, 3, 4, and even 5, and so let's go and see if there's anything interested, if there's anything actually interesting. I haven't actually read through this yet, so you know, this is going to be my initial reactions as well. So season 1. Barry used his forensic abilities to determine his enemy's weaknesses and defeat them, changed so the rest of the team could have a more active role in missions. So this makes sense, this isn't anything too weird because they do want to spread it out. It is actually an ensemble show, even if it's called The Flash, it's about The Flash and the team, so that makes sense. So the next bit is, Iris is a psychology student interning at CCPD as a junior criminal profiler changed to be closer to the comics so in the comics she's a reporter and they changed that although they didn't fully go ahead with the iris as reporter storyline but they have eventually got to there so kind of makes sense that they want to go closer to the comics next bit eddie is a douchebag hotshot who dislikes barry he transferred to central city after accidentally killing his partner and covering it up to protect his career changed as they thought making Barry's rival a nice guy was a more interesting take. I agree, I think their relationship was really nice and really kind of sweet, although it's like, oh, you know, Barry likes Iris, but he's actually going to get married. So I really do like that they didn't go with the original concept. Caitlin is older, had a past relationship with Harrison Wells, and her not-so-dead boyfriend is Carl Nimbus slash The Mist. She was de-aged down to replace Hartley in the core trio, and her fiancé was changed into Ronnie Raymond Firestorm to be closer to the comics. So this makes sense if they planned on making her a core character, because the CW does like to go for a younger cast, sort of as the ensemble, so you know, mid-twenties around then, or late-twenties. That's what they tend to go for, unless it's like Steven, who's a little bit older than some of the rest. So that makes sense. Okay, so moving on to the next bit, Hartley is part of the team, has a friendly rivalry with Cisco, and is initially more concerned with salvaging his career than protecting the scene. Changed to streamline the cast, Caitlin took over this role. Makes sense, they obviously really like Danielle, and they really like the idea of maybe bringing Killer Frost in down the line, which they eventually did. And Hartley, as we saw, nothing too special, he was just alright. Okay, so moving on to the next bit, Joe was killed by the mist in the pilot episode, changed because Jesse L. Martin was just too awesome to waste. Makes sense, if you're going to cast someone as big as Jesse L. Martin, who's massive on Broadway, who's done some very big roles on film, like Rent and everything, makes sense, no reason to kill him off, I guess the only reason why they would try and kill him off is Joe is in a comic book character. Okay, so Snart and Rory are metahumans, changed to be closer to the comics. I could see either or, I could see it working with them being metas or not. Next bit, Dr. Light would be featured as a metahuman former star lab scientist seeking revenge against Wells. Hartley likely took over this role. I don't really have too much to say about that, but that makes sense because Dr. Light was really kind of interesting with the way they brought her in and the fact that she was 
I believe Barry's girlfriend for a while. Yeah, she was actually. And it just has this sort of nicer sort of relationship. And the reveal in season two that there's another version of her was really cool. And yeah, so Hartley was just there for a few episodes and they obviously wanted to prolong Dr. Light a bit longer than just a one episode or a two episode thing. Next bit, Barry and Caitlin would hook up. Changed after Grant suggested they sped up the Barry slash Iris relationship. So I'm guessing what they're hinting at here is that maybe for season one it would be Barry and Caitlin and then it was always supposed to be Barry and Iris. So that's very interesting that perhaps they originally concepted it to be Barry and Caitlin because there is a lot of scenes in season one and even going on to season two for a bit but mainly season one there is scenes where you're like this could work and obviously in the comics Barry and Iris have always been a thing for a very long time and so that makes sense but yeah I can see why they were you know maybe speed this up maybe why Grant suggested they speed it up because that is you know the comic book fans would root more to that but they obviously did like Barry and Caitlin together as well. Okay, so let's move on to season two. So season two begins with this. Zoom is Earth 2's Barry Allen. Changed because the writers fell in love with Jay Garrick slash Hunter Zolomon twists. They still use most of Earth 2 Barry's original characterization for Hunter. That is interesting. That is really interesting. So they originally maybe concepted that Zoom would be Barry Allen, like a doppelganger of himself. But they really liked the idea of the Hunter Zolomon and Jay Garrett twist. I think they went with the right option. And I think it was good that they, you know, left that to Savitar. So maybe that was a leftover concept that they wanted to use. And put it into actual, into actual use in terms of Savitar. So that's really interesting. Okay, moving on to the next bit. Jay is not Zoom. But a roguish speedster from Earth 2 who joins forces with Barry to stop Zoom. They clash at first, but slowly become friends, and Jay grows up into a true hero. He would still hook up with Caitlyn, changed due to the Jay Hunter twist. Makes sense. Jay Garrick is obviously a comic book character, and if the and if this rumor slash leak is true, it makes sense. If they really like that twist, and perhaps this version of Jay Garrick, the fake Jay Garrick we saw on the TV show, was always supposed to be the real Jay Garrick. You could see that because Jay Garrick is a massive Flash comic book character, that he is a speedster, of course he would be helping stop Zoom, but they like the twist and I think they went the right way. Okay, next bit, Patty was supposed to stick around, learn Barry's secret identity and join Team Flash, he would have likely been promoted to the main cast in Season 3. It's a shame, I really did like Patty. I think it was just a matter of them speeding the Iris relationship up, but also perhaps the actress... I completely forgot her name Chantel I believe her first name is but she actually booked a show really soon after that so perhaps that played into that okay so moving on to the next bit Iris would actually date her editor Scott Evans for a while since Barry and Patty weren't were not supposed to break up so soon makes sense I guess she's gotta date someone I guess Ronnie was supposed to stick around but had to be killed off and replaced by Jax when Robbie and Mel couldn't commit to the Legends of Tomorrow. Again, a lot of this is very logical with the way that things are played out with us being in the future now from them making these decisions in the past a few years ago. Makes sense. Okay, General Eiling was supposed to recur to be a recurring antagonist, my, my bad for Firestorm, but he was cut when Ronnie was killed and Stein and Jax moved to Legends. No comment really. Legends of Tomorrow was originally envisioned, envisioned as a mid-season show and Snout and Rory were at one point supposed to come back to the Flash to keep assembling the rogues. The rogues are a massive thing in the Flash comics so I can see why this could happen and I'm happy that they actually went over to Legends because I think they're better there. Um, Miramax Sorry, not Mirror Max. Mirror Master and Doctor Alchemy would be introduced as part of the Rogue storyline in season two. So we know we saw Doctor Alchemy in season three. We saw Mirror Master in season three. So they just sort of prolonged that idea. Last one for season two: 
Jay Garrick was originally planned to be Earth 3's Eddie Thorne rather than Earth 3's Henry Allen. Oh, so some sort of twist, which is very interesting. So that would be, I would be down with that. I would have been down with that, but I like the twist they did anyway. Season 3, the writers admitted that they didn't fully plan the season, resulting in many forgotten plots like the Star Labs Museum, Sabotage's plans for Jesse, the appearance of Accelerated Man. Again, lots of plot holes in Season 3. I do really like Season 3, contradictory to a lot of people's opinions after that season. But yeah, there is a lot of plot holes. Next bit, Mirror Master and Top were meant to replace Snart and Rory as the leaders of the rogues, but fans didn't really respond to them and Grey Damon was cast in a movie shortly after and had to be written out acting the new rogue storyline. The next bit, the rival was at some point considered for a recur for a recurring role, sorry, as Wally's own speech arrival while Savitar would be Barry's. Makes a whole load of sense. That would have, I guess, given Wally a lot of stuff to do, but it was a really great start to the season to potentially think is the rival going to be the main villain? I remember thinking of that. Is Savitar actually going to come, or is it actually the rival? I really liked how they did it. Julian was supposed to struggle against Savitar's influence and the return of Doctor Alchemy throughout the season, but never, but never really did after Team Flash Freedom in the mid-season finale. Okay, so let's move on to season four. We're getting close to the end here. Julian was going to be promoted to the main cast in season four before. Tom Felton ultimately decided to not return. I think we all knew that by now. Ralph and Caitlin would get together, but Danielle Panabaker objected since Caitlin had already been involved with Jay slash Hunter and Julian. She said this before, so this isn't news. We already know that Danielle thought that Caitlin needed some time off because, you know, she's been through a lot of shit recently with those characters. Okay, so Gypsy would recur throughout the season and stay with Cisco but had to be written out when Jessica was actually cast on Taken. We knew this, so I guess this is not really anything worth going over. Jesse had to be written out due to Violet Bean's other commitments, and Wally was moved to Legends shortly after. So Violet was actually shooting a film last year, True for Dare, I believe it was. I didn't actually get to see it, but it was by Blumhouse. So she had a lot of commitments, and I know she's on a TV show right now, so... I understand why Jesse's not around. Tracy Brand was also supposed to return, but never did. We kind of knew that. Amunet was envisioned as a secondary antagonist with her own team of meta henchmen, but was slowly changing into more of an anti-hero. And this makes sense, and also no one likes Amunet, so it's not very surprising that they didn't, you know, bump her up to be a secondary antagonist. Moving on to the next bit, there were rumours about a two-parter set on Earth 3 exploring Jay's backstory and introducing his mysterious female protege that didn't come through. That is a very interesting thing. They never went through with that mysterious female protege, the speedster that he's been training. We haven't seen her. I totally forgot about that and I really want to see and find out who that was. And I believe they should be going back to the two-parters. I don't think we're getting one this year, but yeah, I love those two-parters. Anyway, moving on to season five, as we head towards the end of this video, there were rumors that Sue Dibney would be introduced as a digital influencer who teams up with Iris for a new project. Considering there's been a digital influencer this season, that being Spin, and Iris is embarking on a new project, the Central City Citizen. There was probably something true to that. I believe it was. I believe they definitely sort of drafted the idea of Sue Dibney because she's a big thing if you've read the comics in regards to Elongated Man. So I thought that she was going to come and I think a lot of people did, especially when the news dropped, but it was Spin and Spin wasn't that good. So I think that's a bit of a wasted concept. I think Sue would have been better. Maybe we'll see her soon. Okay, last bit. A deleted scene alluded to Weather Wizards reforming the rogues with Ragdoll at his first as his first recruit, sorry, which seems to have been dropped in favour of the young rogues formed by Weather Witch, Silver Ghost, and Spin. Again, 
I think Weather Witch is pretty good. I think Silver Ghost was pretty bad, and I think Spent was actually bad as well. So I don't think they're actually going to form that. I think they're going to sort of slack off on that. Although Weather Witch did return, maybe they do like her. But yeah, there was that deleted scene with Weather Wizard and Ragdoll that hasn't come to fruition, and I don't believe it will because. I don't think there was a whole lot of love for Ragdoll. I liked him, I thought it was really creepy. But the way he ended the episode was kind of just boring and a bit lame. I'm sorry to use an American term, but it kind of was. And Weather Wizard, I think his time sort of run up on the show. He's been around for so long, and I think he's sort of just passed his due date by now. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm sorry that I made a few mistakes talking throughout, but this is uncut. I don't have much time to actually go through and edit all of this because like I said, I have to leave very soon and I must sleep. Otherwise, I'm just going to be dead going on the flight. So anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. What do you think of all these deleted concepts? Are you kind of sad that some of this didn't actually make it or are you excited to hear this different new concept that perhaps would have been cool but you liked the actual outcome they went for so anyway guys i'll see you guys later goodbye